Hello everybody and welcome back. So, welcome back to yet again another episode of wiring up the Firelight ES50X addressable fire alarm control panel. So in this episode I'm going to cover how to get this panel connected to monitoring using one of the onboard POTS communicators. So let me zoom in there. Yeah, you see those two black blocks on the circuit board itself? Those are the onboard POTS communicators. And you also see it says line one and line two next to them. And when I say POTS, that means just regular landline or RJ11. So to start off, to get it connected to um, monitoring using the POTS communicator, well, first you have to take an RJ11 cable for landline, just like this one right here. And you just simply need to plug it in to that connector there. And then you need to get the other end connected to phone service. Either just, you know, going straight into a phone block or however you get phone service in your building or house or the way you're supposed to do it. I mean, is using an RJ31X connector, um, but of course, I don't actually, I don't actually have one of those available for this. If you're not familiar um, with what I'm talking about when I say RJ31X, please reference my security system wiring tutorial video covering how to wire up the security system to a phone line because there I actually used the proper method of using an RJ31X block. But for this fire alarm panel, we're just gonna go straight into phone service without using a special phone block to do so. All right, so after you get the panel physically connected to phone service by however means you do it by, now we need to get into programming mode again so we're already here. So we need to scroll down in programming mode until we get to communicator, which is option two. So, well, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to pot settings, which is that's option number two, line one. And then we're gonna push one to enable it since right now it says it's not enabled. Uh, touch tone, yes, that's probably what you want for most modern phone lines. I mean, the other option is pulse, I'm pretty sure, but, uh, yeah, probably most modern phone providers over landline do not support pulse dialing anymore. So, leave it at touch tone. Supervised, if we turn that on, essentially, the panel will just keep, um, periodically making sure that there is voltage coming over the phone line there that is connected to the onboard communicator. If there's not voltage after the, you know, after checking it a few times, then it'll give off a trouble on the panel saying that the line's been cut. So, I think actually for this video I'm going to turn that on just to show you what that's like. And that's all the, all the options on this page, so let's escape out of there. Let's go escape out of this too. And now we're gonna go to primary comm path, which is option one, and pots, option one. So it is not currently enabled, let's enable that. And then the account code that is the account number that is assigned by your central station when you onboard their monitoring services. So, I'm just going to type mine in real fast. Alright, so now that we have that all punched in, let's see if there's anything else we need to do. Oh yeah, and then phone number. That is the actual phone number to reach your central station. So, you need to punch in the full phone number right there. Uh, 
And also, when you're punching in numbers here, it's pretty interesting. So, you would think that as soon as you push the next number, it's just going to automatically, you know, put a space there and move on to the next field, but it doesn't. It'll just keep putting whatever number you push next over the number you already put there and just erase that previous number. So, you have to put whatever number you want, just like this, you know. I'm going to put a 2 there, and then you have to push these arrows. Let me zoom out a bit. Push these arrows right here, and that actually gives you a space. So, you would think it'll just do that by default, you know, after you already punch a number. But no, you have to do all that manually. And then once you're done typing in the number, then hit, hit the menu slash enter key. And there you go. And then the communication format. Right now it's set to contact ID, which there's nothing wrong with that except the fact that probably on most modern phone lines that's not going to work so well due to digitation and the fact that the contact ID digits are just going to keep getting garbled up when it's trying to transmit and the central station receiver is not going to understand the signals it's trying to relay. So I'm actually going to change that. I'm going to use SIA20 which is probably the best format just to use all around, including on modern phone lines, and it's the most detailed. Let's see here. And then this second option here, 24 hour test time, that's just a time you can set where it does its periodic test to the central station, just a test that it still has communication. But I think, other than that, I think we should be all good on these settings here. Alright, yeah, so it looks like that's all the settings that we need to change um, and enable to get the POTS communicator working on the panel. So we're just going to back out of programming now. Okay, why is that not on? Did I miss something? Oh, you know what I... So, looks like I actually missed something from last time. So on communicator, when it says installed, it says no. Well, I probably need to change that to yes instead. I guess if that wasn't, you know, at, selected as yes, then pretty much everything else I would have done isn't going to work. So, let's try that now. Yeah, so now one way we can tell that the communicator is enabled is, yeah, you see that flashing light there on the circuit board. And whenever the line is in use, usually a little red light comes on next to that onboard communicator on the circuit board there. Yep, now you see the line's in use, so now it is reporting. I'll be quiet. Alright, so now that we have enabled the communicator to work and seem to have put in the correct settings for reporting, we are going to do an operational test. So, for example, yeah, I'm going to set off an alarm and we're going to make a report and I also have my telephone test set here connected to the same line. So we're going to listen to the conversation between the panel and the central station receiver.
All right then. And then yeah. So now we're gonna stop the alarm. And let me reset the station here so it doesn't go off again. So we set it. It'll probably communicate again. Yep. And there you have it. Yeah, it's also gonna communicate every trouble that comes up on the system too, like it's beeping at me right now about. But it appears that we have successfully gotten the, the communicator to work and is reporting to a central monitoring station. Um, let me also show you what I'm talking about when it periodically, you know, just um, opens the line for like a millisecond. You know, just to make sure there's still voltage there, because we did enable supervision earlier. Yep. <laughs> and it also kind of made my test set freak out a little bit, but you saw it just flicker the line there, just making sure there's voltage there. And now I'm actually going to disconnect this. And now... After it tests it a few times and realizes that there's no voltage there, the system's going to go into trouble. Oh, yep, there it goes. It's in trouble now. Yep, for telco line one, since we pulled the plug, it thinks the line's cut now. So, I think that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you, our, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching, and, oh yeah, and before I forget, you see also the communication light is also flashing over there, so that's another just minor feature I wanted to point out too, but thank you guys for watching the video, and hope, you, hope to catch you guys in the next one.